Three years ago, I posted a video that I did not expect to take off like it did. When I made Hey Remember the Troop, I wasn't expecting to see such a massive amount of people compared to my popularity at the time to watch me talk about a show about teens fighting monsters and it was a Nickelodeon show. That was a start, but the next video would blow that one out of the water. To this day, my one observation of a certain Cartoon Network show oh. would, at the time of this recording, Jesus remain the undefeated titan that is the most popular video on my channel. Oh my god, his eyes! The transformations in Ben 10 Classic are painful. At the time, I just assumed I would get lost, since the original show is old enough to vote, and the current run of the show is... Lost. You dumb watch! ...different. Not to mention other thoughtful videos on Ben 10 Classic were being made. I didn't expect the video to do numbers. I still made the video and uploaded it, and it did nothing for a few months, or at least to my knowledge it did nothing. It wasn't until the end of May, over two months passing when I uploaded it, that while I was nailing some fancy wood on a wall, I got bombarded with notifications of comments, an abnormal thing for me at the time. I even got my first hate comment. You know I was so proud, I finally made it. It's on my shelf. But as months turned to years and other poetic phrases, I noticed a trend in the comments on the video, usually a comment would either say, he doesn't feel pain, it happens in a second, or he can't feel pain, or my favorite, he said in Omniverse, it's a good stretch. But before I continue on, I just want to say that I'm very thankful for every comment that's on that video or any of my videos since that video. Every YouTuber has stated that the comment section can get overwhelming or how bad the comments have gotten since they started, and I was just appreciative that I got comments from people that weren't my brother or people that I knew. That being said, it does get kind of annoying to see the same thing pop up in the same comment section of the same video all the time. I titled the video, The Transformations in Benton Classic Are Painful, because theoretically, the transformations in Benton Classic should be painful, and here are my observations as to how each one is painful, is just a mouthful. I'd wear that on a shirt, but today I'm going to look at how pain works to figure out once and for all if he would feel pain. And we're also going to look at the Omnitrix itself to see if it has any pain dampering feature in it. Let's start with... Obviously pain is... But how does pain go from hand to... There's a specific nerve cell we have called a Naki receptor. I no Noki receptor? I don't know. Here it is. The word. These are the pain receptors, and when pain is felt from temperature, pressure, or chemicals, a neurotransmitter is then sent through the nervous system. When it finally reaches the brain, that's when the pain is registered, and the brain sends a signal back to make the correct action. Then endorphins are released, which are your body's own painkillers. So that's how pain goes from hand to... So now that we know that how pain works, we can ask ourselves... One of the arguments in my comment section about how Ben doesn't feel pain is that the transformations take up to or less than a second. And this is roughly true. A Reddit post I found, link in the description, explains that in the reboot, the Omnitrix is clocked at... 100 yettabytes per 0, 0.0 lot of zeros one cubed second. This also came from Duncan, can't pronounce your last name, one of the co-creators of Ben 10. And pain moves one meter per second. So if my hunch is correct, the Omnitrix can transform you faster than it would take for your body to register pain. Point to you guys. But the Reddit post also explains that this is the speed of the reboot Omnitrix, so maybe the original classic series Omnitrix could have been faster or as fast or even slower. We can't really say for sure. So the argument still stands. But whatever, I'm a kind of man. I'll give you the point. There you go. So I've been scouring the internet for Omnitrix lore because I'm too shy to tweet at Man of Action. I'm awkward, okay? The best source I found is the Benten Wiki entry on the original prototype Omnitrix, 
I read through all the features in the wiki. There's no feature that states that the Omnitrix dampens pain or just gets rid of pain whatsoever. The Omnitrix has a GPS and is able to create a holographic map, but nothing at the moment says it prevents pain. You can even look at the features section for yourself. Like to transform? Sort of like a good stretch. One quote. One single quote from the fourth series in the franchise toppled my videos to the ground. Mm, not really. In Omniverse, Ben says his transformations are like a good stretch. And if you aren't aware, he means something like this. But let me ask you this. Imagine you don't work out, and you decide to do a full-on workout. You're going to feel really bad and sore and achy, and you're going to feel a lot of pain. Now imagine six years from then, you do the same workout. It's not going to feel as bad. You're going to actually feel fine. Maybe even like a good stretch. This could be the same thing for the Omnitrix transformation. After doing it for quite a while, even with the gap between 11 to 15, yeah, you too would probably get used to the pain and actually tolerate it. So this is editing Justin here. I just came across the Wikipedia page for the transformation sequences while looking for the clip of Ben saying that it feels like a good stretch. According to Duncan, it says, the nature of the transformations in the original series were intentionally made to look very painful. They were meant to seem very painful, as it says on the Wikipedia page. Uh, even if Ben says that it felt like a good stretch, conservatively, with the Ultimatrix, Ben felt discomfort when utilizing the ultimate forms. So it kind of does fit my logic of him feeling pain in the original series and him feeling it as a good stretch in Omniverse. So yeah, one quote in a show that technically in the timeline takes place six years before Ben gets the prototype Omnitrix can't really justify anything about the prototype Omnitrix or the Ultimatrix in Omni or in Ultimate Alien. But let me know in the comments below, do you think Ben would feel pain from this? And if so, what's your science? Also, I've been contemplating uh, dropping some new merch, uh, but I didn't want to do something like a shirt or that because I know no one really buys the, the shirts, but I wanted to do something for you guys. So what I thought of was maybe doing stickers and selling them pretty cheap on Spreadshirt, hopefully. I don't have any sticker designs yet. Well, I have designs, but I don't have any to sell at the moment. But uh, I know one of them is going to be the first ever, or the, you know, the thumbnail from the first Transformations Are Painful video. And I might just make all of them and that. I have some from the Mondays and that. So yeah. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Become a time traveler today. Links to all my social media are in the description below, as well as the merch store, so keep an eye on that for these stickers. And until the next video, we'll see you in the future. Bye, guys.